What is up, down, and sideways, all you beautiful individuals? Welcome back. It's another epi of League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with your beauties, and the off-season roller coaster continues to roll on. It always, it kind of, it kind of peaks early, and then you're gonna rev up a little bit gradually before that second peak. We are definitely in the revving up phase, but the newest team to the LEC or EMEA, K Corp. Making some noise, making a little splash. Maybe not the splash you were expecting out of them. Not the big money, not the big spending type of splash. I think a lot of people anticipated with the debut of birth into the LEC. Seems a little bit more budget given what we're expecting these contracts to end up being after this past year. Let's dive into some of these signings. It is juicy and thankfully the LEC is giving us these off-season rumors leading right up until the weekend's matchups. Now, owner of K Corp and the org said they would probably come in with a conservative budget. And if heading into last year, you saw this rumored roster, you would say it's anything but a low budget when you have Upset and Bo now being linked to joining the squad. But Stocks had an all-time low for both of these guys after the abysmal end to the year that Team Vitality had. There's no saving it from the nosedive that Vitality had throughout that, you know, abysmal, really bad summer split is the big one to talk about. Leading into this offseason, no way you were going to see those contracts in any type of the same, the same realm. And I think understanding that with the message from the owner of K Corp, ownership of K Corp, that it was going to be more so of a, a reasonable budget, I think it lines up that I, I, these guys are on some budget contracts. And maybe that means perks going to Heretics was also cheaper than expected. But I, I really feel like the core of this Vitality team. They're still good. It was just this team didn't click. I want to see Bo given another opportunity in a new team environment. I don't know what the relationship between him and Upset was, but still no doubt in my mind that Upset is and will be a premier AD carry in the league. And Bo, his English is only going to get better. His communication is going to only improve. I know he was getting benched at the end of the regular season last year, but you are an absolute loony if you're thinking Bo was the sole and main problem of that Vitality squad. Yeah, he individually made mistakes, of course. I think that's undeniable seeing what happened with Vitality, but finding that root issue of the cause with the bigger percentage of it, all these type of things, you're not really going to find Bo in that type of list. I think both these players are more than in the category, uh, you know, tier that you're willing to give another opportunity, that you want to take this extra shot. You need to see whether that is going to be the continuation or not. And you take that risk if you're a squad like K Corp looking to build out on this budget. And as you mentioned, having pieces like Cabochard in the top side, you've got something solid there. There's still going to be room on this expected roster for one, a traditional carry in the bot lane like upset and number two an ex you know an experimental kind of push the pace jungler in that position and have someone play those carries be a dominant force in the lec you take these risks you take these shots and especially uh, what we're assuming is a discounted rate you got to go for it if you're k-corp when you look at the rest of this rumored roster i think Cabo Shard is 100% lock. The guy literally turned down LEC offers to stay with K Corp. He's French. I'd be shocked if he wasn't on the starting lineup come the winter split. Mid lane is a bit of a question mark. Maybe they're bringing Sake in, just promoting him. Maybe they'll get another young player. That's the biggest question mark. And then bot lane, I've seen two names people are throwing around. Either Targama staying on the squad, also getting that promotion to the big leagues, or... There's a lot of free agent supports, but how about reuniting Mr. Hillisang with upset? Bring in Yamato as the head coach, little mini fanatic reunion. <laughs> could, could pay off is one of the ways to look at those options. I think uh, when you're looking at the support position, it does really kind of have to be down to those two. And part of me wants to stick with Targamus. He's a player that I thought didn't get quite the proper shake at the LEC level his first time around and then goes back down and proves that he is of that type of caliber, someone that should be considered for one of these starting spots available at the support position. 
Hila Sang would be that type of angle, as you're mentioning, bringing in that built-in, that past type of chemistry and history to this roster, to the organization, would be something to see. And in the mid lane, as far as we're hearing, I'm seeing a couple of other ERL names thrown out there. You know, Checo Lad, someone we have seen play a little bit at the LEC type of level, as well as, uh, as of course, Saken, who's already been there for k and has been on K-Corp, been a staple. I think three EU Masters under his belt with this uh, Carmine Corp organization. So obviously the fan base is going to follow them to the EMA. We'll see if they can immediately be competing for, I mean, this theoretical roster, depending on the mid laner, should be a playoff team. They're not going to immediately be contender status in the LEC. Uh, other big name LEC fella on the move, Niski. He's not coming back to the LCS. Sounds like he is linked to SK Gaming and, you know, kind of double with that. We're now seeing Mad Lions are going almost the full Spanish route and it's going to be four rookies around El Yoya, which means he is absolutely no way around it. Got to step into that leadership veteran role with this Mad Squad. And there's some doubts about Oyoya stepping into that type of position, given kind of the attitude and disposition we have seen from him in the past, even, you know, growing into more of a leadership type of role with the past iteration of the Mad Lions, not necessarily in that sole ownership of it. But I still don't think that I got the vibes that set you off that wants him to be that leader moving forward. This is going to be a tough new shift for him in his career and how you handle things and how everything's going to go. Who knows? Maybe he's all for it. Maybe he is wanting to bring in that youth movement and energy and all these other type of things. Still a young guy himself. Uh, it's going to be something to keep track of with these Mad Lions and something I think even individually, I want to get a little bit more information, more uh, research into these young players stepping into the spotlight. And then again, Niski going on SK. I think as we hear that the LEC is going to have big budget reductions heading into this year. Everyone's saying doom and gloom potentially for Europe. But how many times have we seen, okay, there's budget cuts. That means we're promoting these ERL players. We're investing in cheaper young talent. And then what happens? They develop into the future stars of the league in three years down the line. They're signing a paycheck for the LCS. But the ERLs from the LEC are the best talent and development system in my opinion, that we have in any of the major regions. So I'm excited if they're not going to be spending big money on free agents, if that means we're going to be seeing lots of young players getting their opportunity. Yeah, and I, it's a double-edged sword, right? You're going to have, of course, a lot, a little bit more whoopsies happening here or there. Or That's that why we, we got three out. splits. Takes them longer to figure stuff out. <laughs> that could be the benefit of maybe moving to that type of formatting. You got to be going with this. And I think of all the regions, especially of all the Western regions that you would want to be taking this type of chance, bet on yourself, bet on that development scene. It is the LEC. So I can certainly get behind that. I like Niski signing with SK. Sure, you could make the argument of maybe wanting another young player in that type of spot. But I think Niski stepping into what will be an SK roster, which I have no doubts will have a rookie somewhere here or there. Having a veteran presence in that mid lane is something that I think you can get behind. And certainly Niski coming off of maybe a couple of questions still with the Mad Lions, but relatively been able to pump out some strong regular season performances is something I think SK is going to be willing to take. And it's not just the LEC that's looking to invest in that domestic young talent. The LCS, we're seeing signs of it. We already saw some shades in the past couple of years. And now one of the new look teams coming uh, into take TSM spot, Shopify Rebellion. We saw they're probably bringing back Insanity. Now we're seeing Boogie also returning, Revan as head coach most likely, and Fake God, the first member of Disguise Toast Challenger scene, looking to get promoted to the LCS. Obviously, we've seen Fake God before, but guys like Palafox and uh, other Members, Dokla, are guys we've seen come to the LCS, falter, go back to Academy, and come back with a resurgence. And I hope that's what we're getting out of Fake God, who was one of the best top laners in the Academy scene last year. And there's no question that, yes, that doesn't happen for every single instance that you can bring up, every example that you have of that type of situation. What we saw last year from Fake God, especially with Disguised Toast, as you mentioned, that is where you can believe that this is going to be one of those instances where this guy is ready to return to this type of level and will 
be up to that competition as well with the rest of the Shopify Rebellion squad. We're still waiting to see the bottom lane, a couple, you know, little rumors here or there, but still waiting to hear a little bit more till to getting solid on that. But with insanity in that mid lane, Boogie coming back as that import, I think there is going to be conversations in that open spot, but probably going down the North American route. We love to see that for good old Shopify Rebellion, especially coming in hot on the heels of the mess that TSM left of their LCS spot. And listen, everybody, Hanser is a fan favorite, but he was a very weak side. I don't want to say liability, but he was not a focal point of TSM. I think there's no question the ceiling you're going to get out of Fake God is higher than Hanser will get at this point in his career. So that's looking like an upgrade. And yeah, we'll see what this bot lane ends up being. But Fake God's going to have to continue to contend with goats like Rich in the top lane. He's coming back to Dignitas. And I know this is a polarizing player, but there's no question you still get these glimpses, these moments that make him one of the most exciting guys to watch in the LCS. Unfortunately, it was about one out of every three, maybe four weeks, you would see that glimpse. Still most of the highlights for Dignitas. But you would see that glimpse and you're like, what is, what's this LPL God top laner doing over here? And of course, you know the history of Rich's whole esports career is one of the things that plays into people being a fan of him as well and wishing the best. This is something that I think for Dignitas, there's lots of things that can be talked about with what they want to do with their roster, solidifying something like Rich and taking another shot at it, seeing if there's going to be ways where you can find out how to get it more often, how to not be, you know, every three or four weeks between getting these LPL God sightings. That's got to be the ticket uh, if you want to maximize what you got with Rich. He can be a focal point. He just needs some semblance of a team around him. So we'll see what the rest of the budget cuts do for Dignitas heading into 2024. Going to be way more rumors to get through. Semi-finals at Worlds on the weekend. This is the prime time to be a fan of Pro League of Legends. We'll be back after the weekend to break it all down, but that's it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. Thank you so much for watching as always, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.